komunikacija se u stvari prvenstveno bavi Arturom i Brandom, zato što ovaj vikend planiramo radionicu vezanu s nekako umjetničku praksu. Ja ću tamo samo dati neki kratki uvod koji je specifično vezan zašto radimo ovu radionicu sada i koji je neki kontekst ovog toga. Prije godine i pol dana smo krenuli jednu inicijativu za u stvari nagradu i promotivni rad za polje angažiranog stvaralaštva koja je u stvari bila inspirirana likom i dijelom Tomislava Lerotića, čovjeka koji je preminuo prije dvije godine, bio je dugo aktivan na hrvatsko-umjetničko-dizajnerskoj sceni kao jedan od rijetki koji je bio zeleni aktivist, to je zbavio se pitanjima aktivizma iznutra i bavio se kroz svoju umjetničku praksu i dizajnersku praksu. Time, inače, na sveučilištu, to je na umjetničku akademiju u Splitu, bio jedno vreme i dekan i započeo je prvi novi kolegi o državi i dizajnu koji prije nije postoja u Hrvatskoj. Eto nekim spletom okolnosti uslijed ove njegove nagle smrti desila se neka situacija gdje je dosta ljudi htjelo u stvari nekako se odužiti za njegov rad u nekim različitim poljima i urađena je neka kratka, neka relativno mala izložba dosta je problematična s njegovim radom što je dosta radio tehnološki bazirane instalacije vezano za recimo mogu pokazati za solarnu energiju ili vezano za robote koristio je razne tehnologije i onda bi on kao u duhu tog svog rada ovo je instalacija na peristilu koja se zove prizemljeni oce u duhu tog svog rada bi on reciklirao i sam rad znači elektroniku koju bi koristio za jednu instalaciju, bi koristio onda dalje za sljedeću, tako da bi rastavio i ove prizme koje je koristio za ovu instalaciju u perestilu. Radio je i vizualizacije ove neke tzv. infografe koje tamo su bili relativno nova stvar vezana za odnose održivog razvoja, energije, recikliranja, vizualije za različne kampanje, ovo je jedna kampanja koju je on pokretao preko weba, jedna lipa po kilovom satu gdje je u stvari tražio da se oporezuje potrošnja kako bi se subvencionirala korištenje solarne energije. Onda ovakve vizualizacije gdje se bavio pitanjima raspodjele, to je separacije otpada, ovo su neki plakati. Uglavnom bio je jako izdvojen u tom svom radu od većina dizajnera i umjetnika koji su kod nas ili bi se sezonski uzeli te jedne teme pa bi nešto uradili ili bi, ne znam, doprinjeli nekoj akciji, ali se baš nisu identificirali s aktivizmom, nisu radili unutar konkretnih organizacija i kampanja kroz dužni period kao što vam to radi. Ono što je meni bilo jako zanimljivo je što te vrste praksi nisu popularne za ovo galerijsko, muzejsko izlaganje, u stvari traže neke druge vrste konteksta i mene osobno su zanimali aktivizmi i kreativnost vezano za LGBT pitanje, vezano za recimo te emancipacijske pokrete koje su recimo u SAD-u vidio oko 80 i vezano za kampanje protiv HIV politika, to je protiv štednje u tom polju za vrijeme regionalne vlasti i tu je najpoznatija bila ACT UP grupa koja je imala Grand Fury svoju kao recimo za razvoj kampanja i vizualija, posebno grupu umjetnika koji su se bavili tim temama i to je recimo jedan plakat koji govori o tom problematici nije dovoljno raditi umjetnost, treba se stvari angažirati u direktnim akcijama. Ovo je jedan od plakata koji 
koje su radili recimo u stilu koji je kasnije preuzao Benetton ili ovo je recimo jedna super instalacija koju su radili vezano za taj njihov slogan koji je bilo dosta dugo vremena poznat Silent Zikon Death koji je prvi put ujedinio neke pokrete koji su bili inače na suprotnim dijelom aktivizma, recimo meksički imigranti u LA-u su zajedno protestirali sa LGBT zajednicom protiv Regana, zato što je jako velike količine novca ulagao u te neke vojne akcije umjesto u prevenciju i izraživanja pohiva. Da skratim, recimo, još je bilo jako puno umjetnika i dizajnera koji su u stvari radili kroz aktivističke prakse, recimo ova feministička grupa Guerrilla Girls koja se bavila odnosom ženskih umjetnica i njihovom pozicijom kao umjetničkom sustavu, koji su radili plakate, radili su ovako neke kao reklame koje su bi objavljivale u magazinima koje bi prozivale diskriminacijske slučajeve ili bi radili performance gdje bi se zbogljali svom radu i kontekstu zašto inflatables i... So I'm just saying, you will just say more specifically about your work and why inflatables are in India rather than posters or something that these previous works were showing. So thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we are so few, I I think we can uh, make breaks, like uh, okay. for yeah, questions yeah. whenever whenever you feel like you want to ask someone. So hi, I'm Hart here. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you, Jaco. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna talk about uh, inflatables, uh, why they're such a great tool for actions and protests. Uh, yeah, I come from fine arts, I uh, actually come from sculpture, and I work together with a lot of uh, different arts and activist groups uh, in different fields, environmental, uh, LGBTIQ, and uh, yeah, just all kinds of things. So it will take around 40 minutes and uh, tell you about all the yeah, all my research and practice uh, in the work with inflatables. So um, yeah, I would like to start with uh, this video, and this was basically our first. Video. This was basically our first action, and it was motivated also all the other actions. Uh, yeah. Oh shit. While delegates are trying to hammer out a deal on climate change at UN talks in Cancun, Mexican protesters have been carrying a giant silver inflatable tool down the road outside. On Wednesday, one group arrived with a 12-meter inflatable hammer. The blow-up hammer was sent by the German-based Eclectic Electric Collective of Artists. Eclectic Electric Cooperative. The symbol of the demonstrants is not a solar but a huge hammer, aufblasbar and made in Germany hoping to use it to symbolically stamp out the talk. They say it's to allow the demonstrators to symbolically stamp out the talks. The conference should be so zerschlagen werden. But entonces veo un super martillo plateado impulsado por la chingona resistencia que rompió el hechizo de la invincibilidad del Estado y le dio un lindo recuerdo a todos los que asistieron. Right gear cab police were in no mood to deliver the hammer to the delegates. Daraus wurde aber nicht. Dem Hammer ging nämlich die Luft aus. As it was chucked over the gate, they descended on it, tearing it to pieces. So, um, yeah, what we did is uh, we made this uh, 12 meter inflatable hammer in a project space in Berlin. Uh, we said it's a workshop, everyone can join, help us make it. Uh, it was like an open pro uh, process. And then uh, we put it in the 
this suitcase and send it to Mexico, to the United Nations Climate Conference. And there the Mexican uh, group inflated it and uh, used it for an action and it became the symbol of the protest against the non-policies of the United Nations Climate Conference. Um, yeah, and just to see how this whole works and the media spectacle that was uh, quite inspiring. Um, and uh, the symbol of the hammer was based on this quote, or inspired by it. Art is not a mirror to reality, but a hammer with which to shape it. So, uh, uh, it says like, um, art, if art, political art wants to have an impact, uh, you should not just represent reality. Uh, but intervene in in the end. So uh, um, yeah, and uh, the we saw first it's compared to Brecht, but then uh, uh, we found that it's not better than Brecht. And uh, in, on the internet, we also uh, some people said it's from Karl Marx, but most likely it's from Mayakovsky, this Soviet constructivist poet uh, at the beginning of the Soviet Union. If you have questions, ask me, and uh, also when I talk too fast, just tell me. Yes. Okay. Uh, right. So, now um, I want to talk about the psychological effects of inflatables. Uh, so, one, uh, inflatables create crowd unity. Um, the first time I noticed this was in Copenhagen uh, during the No Border demonstration. Uh, it was, this was during the, the climate summit uh, talks in Copenhagen in 2009. And, um, dimensions of inflatables. Oh, 
a million people line New York streets to see the annual Thanksgiving Day Parade, with a series of enormous inflated figures representing famous historical and screen personality. Walt Disney's Donald Duck seems to be suffering from that morning after the night before feeling. Pull yourself together. The little pig may be still running away from the big bad wolf. And now they're all waiting for Mickey himself. Here he comes. Here's someone else who looks a bit under the weather. Stand up, old boy. Show them you can take it. It's very wet, but I'm enjoying it, aren't you? Come along now. Stand back. The highest part of the procession is a 58-foot model of a red Indian, complete with feathers, loin cloth, very small, and a sarcastic grin, which looks in at the 10th floor windows. The big laugh comes when they have to take him under the elevated railway. Here comes the body. Another one dead to the world. That's right, you bark and show you don't approve. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, this was like the beginning of the use of inflatable figures for parade. So it's, a, it's an alternative mobilization strategy and also the good thing of it is, uh, is that people can uh, join the process on their own terms. So maybe they are not so political but they just like to make an inflatable sculpture. So there are like artists or other people who are more interested in the, in what it can do and the media spectacle. That's why they join. So uh, you you can create open processes so people from different backgrounds can join. So this was a workshop in Barcelona where we also made an inflatable cloud. Um, So the presenter was saying um, she was reporting just how you wish to wish how you imagine it. So we start Friday evening, uh, also starting small with the prototypes, and then Saturday, Sunday, big, and then yeah. 
Yeah. So we need also more people, so get all your friends here. Uh, yeah, this is also just to see uh, like clouds, how they were made. And uh, I have to scroll a bit forward. Uh, ah, we see the whole video. It's